All right, our next section dealing with geometric optics is to talk about how we can manipulate light by using lenses and mirrors. So everybody's looked into a mirror and you know that you see a reflection. And we want to talk, look at in details about how that reflection is formed and how we can describe that. That's called geometric optics and we're going to do ray tracing. Now, when we have this picture of a person looking in the mirror at their own hand, they're seeing what we're going to call a virtual image. And we'll notice that up and down stays the same, but it has a left-right uh, change. It changes things from left to right. It reflects from left to right. So um, we'll keep that in mind as we go through this. Now, several definitions we're going to make. We're going to talk about an object distance, an image distance, and magnifications. P, I think both the books uh, use P and Q. One of them may go, have switched over to S and S prime, but generally object is P or S and image distance is S or S prime. And they are defined to be the distance from the mirror to either the object or the image. And we'll see that in a ray diagram. Images come in two types. They're either real or virtual. Real means the actual rays form. If you're looking at a real image, for example, when we're in in the, in the classroom and you're looking at the projected image uh, onto the smart board. That's a, that's a real image. The virtual image is when you're looking into, through your glasses, through your contacts, into uh, a microscope or a magnifying glass. So here's our mirror. Here's an object that's emitting light. And the way we see it is that light's reflected to our eye. But it looks to our eye like it's coming from back here, not over here. And therefore, the image appears to be a certain distance from us. And the object to mirror is the object distance P, and image to mirror is our image distance. This is a virtual image that we're showing here. Now, what we're going to do is be very formal about it. And one of the things I'm going to want you to do for the, the final is to be able to draw all these ray diagrams. So not only do you need to do the numbers, but you know I like the pictures. And 25 to 30 points on this next and final exam will probably be involved in doing ray diagrams. So let's let's follow this. So generally, you draw your surface. This one's flat. We're generally going to go from left to right. We draw an arrow for the object so we can clearly see its head and tail. And then we'll use various rays. Now, for reflection, we know the incoming angle and outgoing angles are equal. So what you can do is you can trace through. This ray will come back on itself. And we're imagining our eyes over here focusing this light. So this ray will look like it came along the same line. So we can extend it. A dotted line will mean it's on the other side of our, it's in the virtual ray. It's on the other side of our mirror. This one reflects. Angles are equal. And therefore, if I'm down here, it looks like it came along this line, this angle. So that angle here is going to be the same as that one. We're going to call the object height h and the image height h prime. And where these two rays form is where, or cross, is where the image of that point would be formed. So there's more rays, but we only need two to locate the image. The base will be formed along the center line here. Now, you can tell by looking at these triangles, because the reflected angle is equal. Make your little x, so that angle equals that one. That means these two angles are equal. If the height's the same, that means the distance is the same. So for flat mirrors, then we have P equals Q, absolute value. Uh, let's switch over, and, and we have a simulation that I've loaded up, this one. Um, not sure what we can do with it, but it does show a we could uh, we can move this guy around. So it really doesn't matter where we put him. This ray is going to go straight. You want to and you want to draw these with a straight edge. You're going to draw a line. Draw your baseline. So get those two lines first. Then take your ruler. Keep on. Go to the mirror and then keep on. Notice it's got errors both ways. And then you're going to come down here to where it intersects the baseline and ref come out with the same angle and then extend this one. And where these two form is your image. If you draw everything to scale, then you can then you can know exactly what the angles are, etc. So and this is our object. And so our, not only is our image and object's distance is equal here, but our object and image heights are the same for the flat mirror. Magnification, 
There's, going to, there's a couple of ways to define magnification. The linear or lateral, the one we'll normally use, is the image height over the object height. And we're going to define things so that if it's above that center line, they're positive. If it's below, it's negative. So that when they're, if M's bigger than 1, that means the, the image was bigger. If M's less than 1, it's smaller. If M's positive, it means it's above the line, the same as the object. If it's negative, it means it's below the line or it's inverted. So M tells us quite a bit about our image. And there again, we have our left-right reversal for image reflection. So that, that's, that's the summary of, of the properties uh, for a flat mirror. Now we're going to talk about curved mirrors in the next video. You might want to pause this and go look at the homework problems. I think he does one for a flat mirror, and I'll post solutions to those problems up uh, later after I get all these videos made. I'll see you in the next video.